Hello, today we're going to talk about Microsoft Word. Uh, for some of you, this is probably the first time you've seen my face because I always wear a mask during class, but uh, you won't have to see my face much. We're going to talk about Microsoft Word and just give you a quick overview. Uh, one thing to consider while you're doing your lab this week was this is the first time that you've actually downloaded a file and then followed instructions in MindTap. Uh, if you have two links, one is to the instructions, it's going to pop up a pop-up window. If that window doesn't pop up, then check your browser, make sure that you've allowed pop-ups to occur. Uh, once you see that window, you just keep reading and do what it says in the document that you downloaded. Make sure that you upload the same document that you downloaded. Uh, MindTap will check for that. It embeds a number within the file as well as names it a specific way. And if you don't upload the right one, then it's going to say you cheated and make you do it again. And tell me all about it. And We don't need to do that. Just upload the document you downloaded and you'll be good. Uh, but follow the directions as specified in the instructions and fill it in. Uh, in this first one that you do this week, you start with a blank Microsoft Word document, which is a little scary because you're supposed to put some stuff in. It will walk you through it as you're reading the directions. Uh, the second one, you start with some pre-built stuff and you have to modify it. But neither one of them are very difficult. They can be a little time consuming because we're learning about MindTap as well as about Word. Some of you that think you know Word, there's going to be some new stuff that's always been there. You just didn't know it. So work your way through it. And shouldn't be that bad. We should be back in school on Tuesday. Uh, so I hope so. We'll see you then. But for now, let's start talking about Microsoft Word. Uh, Microsoft Word is the one that most people are familiar with. Most of you have seen this screen. You've got all these names on the top. We've got tabs on the ribbon. Most people ignore the dark blue bar up at the top, but there's some activities there that are going on that you can use, and you can also modify it and add your most common things to it. But the one that's there most is saving the file. Everybody's always clicking on file and save, but it's right there on the top bar. Uh, you've got the insertion point, which is the blinky prompt over here in the middle. All right, that's called an insertion point. Dark gray areas are areas you generally don't go. The status bar will tell how many words you've typed, what, how you're viewing your document. I would advise you to go click on all of these different things just so that you have an understanding of, of how they work and that they're there. Also, uh, you've got your normal Windows button over here, minimize, restore, close. Always make sure that you save your documents. And when you download these documents, make sure you know where they downloaded to. And I would go ahead and build you a folder structure, just say somewhere on your desktop, uh, file, folder, new folder, 1301 or COSC, and put all your documents in there. And that way you know where you saved them and you know where to open them from. All right, Word is designed to make words pretty. It is not a text editor. It is a word processor. And word processing has to do with words, fonts, paragraphs, documents. You can use touch mode if you're doing this on a laptop or something that has a touch screen. Uh, if you enable touch mode, which I'll let you look under view and find that, uh, it's going to put a little more space between everything because humans have these big old fat fingers instead of a nice little mouse button. Uh, on the quick, ass tool, uh, quick access toolbar, not the other toolbar I just mentioned, uh, you can customize it and add touch mouse mode to the top, go back and forth. And that's a good way if you have a touchscreen device or you're doing it from a tablet of some sort. Uh, Microsoft was originally designed to be done on PCs, so it's mostly oriented toward that, but they're trying to add more options so that you can use your fingers if you want to. You want to make sure that your window take up, takes up the entire space. Uh, Windows is all about keeping things in little boxes, but it can get a little cramped and a little small. And some of your ribbon parts can disappear if you don't use the full screen. So use the full screen if you can. You also want to have rulers turned on. Up on the bar on the top, you'll see something called View. And on the View tab, there's a Show Group. If you're looking back at our initial picture here at the beginning, you've got your tabs going across the top. You've got your ribbon here. 
When you click on view, notice these names on the bottom. These are the groups. All right. So when you click on view, you're going to see a group called show. And you can click some check boxes in there to show different things. And I would click everything. Uh, play. Make sure that you know what stuff does. You can also zoom. There's a whole other group. And you can get zoom into your document or zoom out. Uh, some people like looking at documents a different way. Now, an important thing in a Word document or in any word processor document is that there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes to make it look the way it looks. Uh, there's a backwards looking P that's filled in. Uh, that's If you click on that, it's actually going to show you non-printing characters like tabs, paragraphs, all that stuff. It's on the home tab. Look over in the middle. It looks like this symbol right here, the backwards P filled in. If you click on it, it's going to show you all of the hidden marks, non-printing marks that are inside your document. And sometimes when you're working with fairly complex documents that have tables and have all sorts of tabs and alignment things, it's very important you're going to want to turn that on because those things can get kind of wonky and get off and things aren't lining up. And it's usually because there's an extra paragraph mark or an extra tab or something. If you click the backwards P, you'll be able to see it and it makes it easier to fix. Always remember to save, all right? Microsoft's pretty good about when you click the X, it says, hey, you want to save this document. But there's two parts to saving. Number one, saving it. And number two, saving it so that you know where it is. I'm a big fan of using the desktop for that. This work that we're doing now is fairly temporary. It's not going to bother you more than a couple of weeks. And then you'll be able to get rid of that folder and move on. But the desktop's an easy place to find. And always check the name that's down there. It should be the name that you opened up the document with our MindTap Labs. But if you're creating your own, you want to give it something that's descriptive. Don't name your document 1.docx because you don't know what 1 means. Something descriptive. Letter to mom. Uh, rec recommendation. Uh, resume. Name it something useful so you can remember what it is just by looking at the name. Okay. This letter is basically partially what we're working on today. Uh, getting the letter to look like this, where everything is aligned on the left, where the different parts are there, where they're spaced properly, uh, is fairly easy to do inside of Microsoft Word. The MindTap Lab 1 that you do today is working on this letter. So, notice we've got things. Here's, here's some of the terms you're going to be using today. Date and inside address, salutation. The bodies where you write the happy text. We got a complimentary close. Sincerely yours. Love, love, hugs and kisses. You know, sincerely yours on a business letter will do. But you get the idea. Leave a space here so that the person can sign once you print it out or put a picture of a signature there. And then tell them what that signature says. If you've seen my handwriting, you know that it uh, is not readable. So you want to know what it says down here on the bottom. Also, someone else may have typed it. Those initials go on the bottom. And last but not least, there may be something else with this paper, and we want them to know that that's coming. So you just put the word enclosure down there to say, hey, something came with this. Take a look at it. Now, Word is designed to make word processing easy. So if you type words that it knows, like February, uh, then you can type F-E-B-R, enter, or tab. And a little screen tip's going to appear. Hey, I think you're typing February. Press enter or click on the screen tip and it'll put the rest of February. Uh, much like your your uh, text messaging app does today. It tries to fill in the words as you're going. So we're entering text. Then we're inserting this address, typing this stuff. Type Carlos Zimmerman, enter, Association of Water Quality Engineers. Remember we're typing a letter, a very formal letter. So you need to make sure you get capitalization correct. Need to make sure you get spacing correct. No extra spaces. Everything's capitalized the way it's supposed to. Just think there's a mean little English teacher sitting on your on your shoulder, and do it from there. Well, we do know that we're sending it to Carla Zimmerman, so we're we're going to be a little informal and say, "Hey, dear Carla, uh, there's dangers in saying, dear Mrs. Zimmerman or Miss Zimmerman, or to whom it may concern." You know, you could get any of those wrong because maybe Carla's married. Maybe she's not. You don't know to whom it may concern. You adjust it to Carla, but then you're being kind of generic and it looks like a form letter. 
So we're just going to go ahead and be casual. Dear Carla, here's some stuff we're going to type. Uh, notice in Word documents, electronic publishing, uh, it tells you to press the space bar. In other words, we want to put one space between sentences. This is a hard thing for people that were trained, especially older people like me. We were trained to put two spaces between sentences. And if you look at the documents on Canvas, a lot of them have two spaces between sentences. It's a very hard habit, habit to break. But at our new electronic life, uh, one space is enough. But you always put spaces after a period, a single space to separate sentences. Hyperlinks. We want to link to external things, to somewhere, to an email, to a graphic. Uh, and y'all have seen hyperlinks in browsers before. You know they're highlighted in some way, usually a blue font with an underline, but you don't have to. And sometimes that blue font with an underline can get in the way, so you want to get rid of it. You want to convert it back to a regular text. So anytime you see something that's blue and underlined in a document, assume that it's a hyperlink, and you can right-click on it and remove that highlighting. And that's something they have you do with the email address that you enter because it automatically recognizes that format. We've got something to the left of an ampersand, followed by an ampersand, followed by something that looks like a domain that ends with .com or .edu or .org. Word goes happily makes it a hyperlink, but you're like, eh, I don't want that. So it's going to position your pointer over the hyperlink. You can press and hold control or to go to the hyperlink, or you can remove hyperlinks by right-clicking and get rid of it. Notice how we're walking through this. This is kind of what you're going to be reading in your MindTap assignment uh, for the project one. It's going to tell you what to do. It's going to tell you when to save. Magic keys. There's several charts inside that that you need to take a look at. And we're going to look at a couple of them here. Uh, the mouse, always having to use menus, slows you down. The ribbon was an attempt to make menus faster, but it's still a menu. Because you're always, you're typing, you got both hands on the keyboard, you're clickety click, 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 and then you got to stop, grab the mouse, move it somewhere, do something, and go back. It doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're doing that three, four hundred times a day, there's a lot of time just moving around. If you can learn keys, the control keys, uh, or the reverse keys, things that you can do while either you're on the mouse side or on the holy keyboard side, your life is going to be a lot better. So when we're talking about moving the, the insertion point around, I mean, you can use the arrow keys without dragging your mouse around. You can go left or right, up or down. You can hold down the control key. That'll take you a word at a time. Control up or down will take you a paragraph at a time. Home takes you to the beginning. In takes you to the end. Uh, control home or control in takes you to the end of the document. All right. Uh, page up, page down, all that's in the keyboard. You don't have to reach over to your mouse, go to the scroll bar, scroll up and down. You can do it all with your keyboard. All right. And it can get pretty complex, as you see on that last one. Control alt page up, control alt page down to the top or bottom of the document window. You got a lot of options here. And these do take practice. Uh, I've seen lots of people who are very good at Word, but they're just slow because they use every menu there is. They're always grabbing their mouse. They're always having to stop typing and move their hand away from the keyboard, grab the mouse, and go somewhere else. So start working on recognizing these keys and moving around this way while you're practicing. Uh, you can use backspace or delete to remove an error. Uh, for a long time, I was a big backspace, back, 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 back. And you've seen that in movies where they're making fun of somebody getting rid of an email. Well, you know, you can highlight the whole thing using your mouse, drag and highlight everything and hit delete. It's another way. Autocorrect is automatically turned on. So if it sees words that are obviously misspelled, like and or ADN, it's going to put a, draw a little wavy red line underneath them. In other words, I've never, I haven't seen that word before. Uh, it's getting better at recognizing misused words, like two versus two, T-O-O -O versus T-W-O. Uh, over the past four or five years, Word has gotten much better at noticing context, that you're trying to say, I have two dogs, and you type T-O-O, -O, 
and it's going to give you a little blue line there going, I'm not quite for sure this is the right word. So when you see those extra marks on the screen, little red underlines or little blue underlines, stop and evaluate what you typed because there's probably something wrong with it. All of you probably had an English teacher who highlighted passive versus active tense. And half the time you didn't know what they were talking about. And you're like, that sentence is fine. And they're like, no, that sentence is horrible. It's a passive, passive voice. You need to use active voice. And you're like, I don't even know what that means. Guess what? Word's going to do the same thing and highlight sentences that could be flipped over. That things that may be clunky or not right. It's going to underline those with little wavy blue underlines. And you should evaluate those errors as you type. Always, always, always proofread your document. Word's going to catch everything, but it's not going to, it's going to catch most things, but it's not going to catch everything. There's, you might have written something stupid. Y'all have already seen some of my announcements where I, I tend to leave out nine uh, noun identifiers or uh, conjunctions like of or for. I misspell them. I start typing so fast. And I do try to proofread, but you still miss something. But you should have seen it before I proofread it. So it was really bad then. Make sure that you proofread what you typed. Don't just assume that your fingers did it right. Engage your brain. Evaluate the document. And check it. Now. Uh, there's a weird thing on this slide. A point is one seventy-second of an inch. And points have been around for 400 years. Uh, they're related to printing, the size of the font, uh, and the distance between lines. We're using them because they've always been there. Everybody is used to them that built all this stuff. So they're just trying to train all of us to be used to it too. You can... When you're talking about font sizes or line spacing, uh, points are directly related to space and size and height. The spaces between paragraphs are measured in points. Word does try to make it simpler for you to say, hey, I, let's just single space this, uh, which is depending on the font you're using, five to seven points uh, or double space or... You can have any spacing in there that you want. It's going to do the best that it can to do that. Remember, it only has 72 places it can stop within an inch because it uses points. So that's a limitation on Word, but it's also a feature in that you can adjust paragraph and line spacing using the uh, paragraph group and the home tab. Remember, home tab, tabs up at the top. Look at the bottom of the ribbon. You'll see which group it is. A paragraph group, you can adjust that line spacing and paragraph spacing uh, sometimes more than you want to. You wish it would just type. But no, you may have to mess with it to add or remove space before a paragraph. A manual line break is called a soft return. All right? If you just hit enter, that's a hard one. Okay? That says, boom, I'm finished with a paragraph. I am creating any spaces that may be before or after my paragraph, I'm putting those in and I'm starting a new thing. If I just want to go to the new line without adding any of those extra spaces, I do what's called a soft return. Hold down the shift key and press enter. That goes to the next line without doing all that paragraph stuff. Okay. Selecting text. Uh, notice you got mouse, a mouse column. You got a keyboard column. Everybody loves the mouse because we're used to using the mouse. We grab the mouse all the time, but the mouse is slow. Keyboard's faster. Control and shift. All right. Beginning of the word, press and hold control, shift, press left or right. All right. Do you want the word before or the word after? If you want to do the line, remember, move the insertion point to the beginning of the line, press and hold shift and press end which takes us to the end of the line all right if we want to do a sentence or just part of it click at the beginning of the sentence or where you want to start hold down control click where you want to end and it'll select just that area click and drag with the mouse left click at the top drag down to the bottom and it's going to select that whole space all right or you can use shift and the arrow keys, and that's going to select lines or words. If you want to do a paragraph, double click on the white space to the left of the paragraph, like over here somewhere. 
next to that paragraph, and it's going to select the whole thing. Or you could use your keyboard. Get your cursor where you want it at the beginning of it, press Control shift press left, right, up, down, whichever direction you want to go. And all of this takes practice. Uh, being a good user of word processing and presentation and Excel spreadsheets just requires you to do it quite a bit. Uh, everybody loves to watch my wife when she's doing Excel stuff because her hands never leave the keyboard and she's just putting in a thousand numbers per minute and then they're all added up and and she never leaves the keyboard because she's learned all these keys. So, and speed is important, especially when you're in an environment. Here's part two. There's other ways to select all sorts of things. You just have to practice. Multiple paragraphs. Click on the left of the paragraphs. Drag down with the mouse while you're holding. While you've left click, drag down. It's going to start selecting things. Entire document. Triple click in the white space to the left of the document text. If you go click, click, click. It's going to select everything. That's an easy, much better than going backspace, 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 back, 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 back. You can just select a sentence and delete that sentence. So several different ways to move around. Now, remember, documents are actually two things. They're the words that are on the page and they're what the words look like when you're thinking of it like a document. Uh, I always think of this, uh, a good thing for me to, to keep in mind was that this is like a, a poster. All right, where you're looking at the poster, you're going, oh, it's pretty. It's got this white space around the outside. I've got text in the middle. It's all lined up right here. And then it goes that way. And then there's a picture over here on the right side and the text wraps around it. All of that is layout. And that's something that word processors do pretty well. So when you're going to check margins, the distance on the side of the page, where it is, where the text ends and it goes until you at the edge of the page, you're done. You got to kind of... <laughs> learn how to look at the ruler all right zero is kind of like the origin on a number line it's where the page starts and you measure from zero from left to the right so when we're talking about eight and a half by eleven page zero is where it starts eight and a half where it ends zero is where it starts eleven is where it ends on the bottom going down so you measure up and down from the zero mark so take a look at those rulers when you've got them up we always want to print these pages or we want to save them to PDF or something. When we go to the file, we can actually use Backstage and then click Print in the navigation bar and we can review it. It's going to give us a preview. We can see what it actually looks like. And if we don't like it, we can hit the back button or escape and go back to the document and fix our problem. But you always want to look at the finished product before you actually print it or save it to PDF and turn it in. And this is what they call backstage. Whenever you hit file, uh, you're going to get this whole thing that covers the entire screen. That's backstage. And when we say print, our document's going to appear over here on the right. We've got a chance to look at it, take a look at it, make sure everything's lined up and spaced out like we want it to be. Also, that we're going to print all the pages. And we want one page per sheet. We haven't printed it yet. We're just ready to print it. We can change all this down here, any of these, and, and kind of mess with them. The defaults usually work for most documents, but you have some options. One of the coolest part about Office and any uh, Office suite, including the one that comes with Mac and OpenOffice, LibreOffice, all those others, was that they come with default templates. Uh, some of them are birthday cards or schedules or calendars or envelopes, which we're going to build. And we can use that template, and it's automatically going to open up something that's the right size, you know, an envelope size. And we can zoom in, we can add stuff. It's easy. This is what templates look like. And you always see that when you're new, but most of the time we just click a blank document. But we've got all these others that we could click on too. And I would open some of them because some of them might be useful in your personal life. Once you've got a blank document open, you can click on the ribbon and click the mailings tab. That's kind of a weird one. Let's take a look here. Open up Word. Blank document. We've got all these tabs up here at the top, but then we've got this one called mailings. And of course, we're creating an envelope. 
So the question it's going to ask, you know, is what address do you want? Who do you want it to go to? Do you want a return address up there in the corner? And let's go back to our slideshow and then see what we're doing here. We're going to type a new address. You know, you can omit, click it if you don't want pre-printed stationery. Sometimes people have envelopes printed with the addresses already on them. Uh, you could put an envelope in your printer and use the print button. Uh, you could actually add it to another document so the document already has an envelope attached to it. And that's kind of cool. At any point, you can open a document that already exists. You can click on File, Open, navigate to where you put it, and then click Open. Save it, File, Save. Save is going to save it where it's currently located, if it's already been saved before. If it's never been saved before, you're going to get the Save As dialog box, and it wants you to put it somewhere. So, like I said, desktop, maybe a folder called COSC1301. Put it in there so that you know where to find it because you're going to have to turn it back into MindTap. You want to be able to find it again. Now, we already talked about this. Is in While you're going, Word is making, uh, making an attempt to find words that are misspelled or words that aren't words. Oh, and also to show you grammatical errors, things that you forgot, you know, like a period or a semicolon or this sentence looks weird, doesn't read right. If you really want to hard check your document and, and have it look deeper rather than on the fly, you can actually use the go to the editor pane, all right, and go fix things. Cancel this. You know, you can go to review. There's proofing up here. Editor. Check for spelling, grammar, and writing suggestions. And right now there's no words in it, but it's going to tell us up here in the top, it would say, what's the grade level for this? How many words is it? Uh, it's looking at the words that you typed and what level they are for reading. It's just, This is very good because a lot of times in business, you're actually aiming for a 10th grade reading level. That way you're sure of ensure understanding regardless of who reads it in the company that you're sending it to. Uh, if you're writing for the general public, say for, I don't know, a youth novel, a young adult novel, then you're aiming for eighth grade. All right. If you start using big words like facetious, their heads are going to explode. They're going to skip them or they're not going to understand the tone that you were trying to set. So you might want to find an alternative for facetious. Good news. We also have a thesaurus built in. So if you wanted to type in a, now I've got to spell this, even though I picked that word out of nowhere. Yeah, that couldn't find it because I can't spell it, but I'll work about it later. But let's do, uh, say, like a good word that we want to replace is frightening. Just type in frightening, and it gives you better words. You know, a sixth grader is going to understand scary. They may not understand frightening. They definitely would not understand redoubtable. So, good. It'll help you find the correct words for what you're trying to do. Now, underneath, uh, once you start going down to options, underneath the op file, go down to options. You can set up, go click on proofing and tell them exactly what you want to look for. Usually it's all turned on. Uh, in some cases, especially if you're doing technical writing, you may want to turn a lot of this off uh, because technical writing doesn't use adverbs. Adverbs is an error. So you may want to check some, uncheck other. By default, I would leave them all on. Now, we've talked, we haven't talked about page orientation. Remember I said we have a page that's 8.5 by 11? We assume that it goes up and down. That's actually called portrait. If you want to go landscape, like your computer monitor, where it's wider than it is tall, then that's landscape. All right, you have to go to zoom level. you got to go to one page. Under the layout tab, you can pick or you know orientation, landscape or portrait. Most of the time when you're writing a letter, it's just portrait. Fonts. 
Those are the shapes of the individual characters that are on the screen. And we're going to talk about fonts as we move further in the semester, especially when we get to PowerPoint, uh, because fonts are a whole art form by itself. But the normal fonts that we use are the new one that Word uses the most. Its default font is Calibri. For a long time, we used Arial. Arial. That was the default font. You have also seen Courier New, like in manuals and things. Let's see, way down here. Courier, if I can spell. There we go. Courier New. Uh, that's I call a monospace font. Got all the characters are the same width. Arial and Calibri. All the characters are not the same width. The capital A is wider than an I. In Courier New, the I is the same width as capital A, or as a capital M. So it depends on what you want it to look like. Different looks for different uses. All right. Now, not only can we mess with fonts, and y'all saw the nice long list of fonts that we had there to choose from and make it any of these pretty things. But we can also change the color or the style. We could make it red. Or we could make it big. Or we could uh, apply some text effects to it, which are built into Word to create a more graphical, pretty effect. These are a lot of options that you have when you're formatting a document. All right. These are the text effects I was showing you on the prior screen. There's a lot of them. You've got the defaults on the top, but you can do individual stuff on the bottom and change them any way that you would like. Y'all saw how easy it was to change the color. Highlight the text. Click on the color you want. You can pick from a set of colors, or you can be all scary and go design your own even down to this level if you wanted to. Aligning text. Uh, most of the time things are left aligned. That's the way most of the books we read, most of the letters we read, they're left aligned. That's what we're used to seeing. But sometimes you want to center align something. Uh, think about the cheap novels that you buy at Walmart. When you look at them and you start looking at the text that's inside of them, they're aligned on both sides of the page, not just on the left, but also on the right. And that's called justified. Uh, we don't normally do that out here, but we're used to seeing it on, doc on documents that we read where they're aligned on both sides. That's called justified. If they're left aligned, then the line ends where it ends. If they're right aligned, then it begins where it begins, but they're all aligned on one side. So let's take a look at that real quick with a couple of things. All right. Those are left aligned. See how they're all aligned on the left? The lines end wherever they end. I can click up here and center align them. Move them so that all the right side is straight up and down, but the left ends where it ends. Or I can use the whole page where a line, as defined, is going to take up the entire width of the page. Now, this looks really stupid in this example, but it's a, it makes things easier to read when you're looking at things on small paper or, say, in a Kindle. Notice that you Kindle readers next time you read, that they're justified. uses the whole width of the page. Some other visual examples inside the slideshow for those terms, left, right, center, justified. You can also do horrific things to individual paragraphs if you want to. Border and shading. Uh, once you've selected the text like this, I could say, hey, that's a paragraph. And then we want to put some borders around it. Notice this is where I hit enter. Remember before? This is one where I did not hit enter. This is called a soft return. This is a hard return. If you don't want the borders, select everything again. Notice how I left clicked and drag out in the margin. And go say no border. It's all gone. 
there's a thing called a format painter uh, where I could pick a format of a group of things and then copy it to multiple sections of the document. I'll show you a good example here. I'm just going to set this to be uh, very basic. And I'm actually going to get rid of my pretty stuff up here. All right. This regular old text. Now, if I can select this, I can. I got a couple of options. I mean, I can use design. That's going to work on the whole thing. I can draw shapes. All right. I can click on a lot of different things. But one of the ones that they're going to want you to deal with is, is Format Painter. Notice on the home, I did that so that it would highlight over here on the side. I click Format Painter. Turn it on. Notice how it gives me a little brush. I can highlight that. Whoops, that didn't do what I wanted. Turn it on. Paint this to be the same thing. And it actually did. Just was so big it put it on another page. But I took all the formatting that was attached to these. Notice it did the alignment. It did the font effects. It did the color just by clicking that and highlighting. And that's an easy way to make some changes. Some people really like Format Painter. I don't use it much, but some people do. You can also add pictures. Uh, that's under the Insert tab. You've got all these things you could add. Pictures, shapes, icons, models. Uh, let's just pick a stock image. And you got to wait for it to load because it's using the internet. Let's look for a puppy. Love puppies. Everybody loves puppies. There we go. Nice little puppy. Insert. Goes and gets the picture. Puts it in there. Notice you have these handles on it. So now you can resize it. So a little fit. Uh, you've also got this little dialog box up. This box that says, hey, how do I want to fit this with the text? You know, do I want to wrap it around? If I do, then that lets me move it places. See how it changes my text? If I say, no, you can't wrap around me. Sorry. Those little options change depending on which one you pick. This is sometimes fun to play with. Also, it's sometimes very irritating because your picture won't go where you want and your text is moving wonky. But you got to play to get good at it. All right. Uh, the other thing uh, was we do have uh, a lot of instances where these documents are going to be seen by a bunch of people or read electronically. And we want to make sure that we're helping anybody that needs help, that there's alternate text attached to our, attached to our picture. Uh, for those who, that are being read the document that can't see uh, or that there's ways for things to be converted into braille we can't convert a picture into braille but if there's some alt, alt text a braille printer attached to it could put it under their fingers so that they could see what you've created also you can use besides the handles that are attached to a picture you can go to the picture tools format tab and this is called by the way a mutable window notice i'm clicking on the text look at my menu up here as soon as I click on the window, I get a new tab that has all these things that I could just do to what's selected, just to the printer, just to the picture. You know, alignment, rotation, wrap text, position, you know, do some things to the picture, you know, add a shadow. It's not a big one, but you can see it just underneath the edge there. You get those context menus is what they're called, where things just appear when you need them. You can add a page border, uh, which we will deal with that later when you're doing part two. Text again, 
numbers and bulleted lists. Sometimes we just want to say, do the following. One, two, three, four, five. That's easy enough. Let me get back this to uh, something a little simpler. All right, no text effects. All right, this is my uh, puppies. Wow, see the red line? Puppies, still not right. Red line goes away. Dogs, cats, uh, iguanas. Put them all in their own line. I held down the shift key and did the arrow key, so I selected. Or you could select like this. Left click and drag. Up here on the top, you've got these lists. Dots, which is considered an unordered list, bullets. Or you've got the numbers. Let's say I wanted to add one. Put my insertion point at the end. Press enter. And it adds another one. That's a numbered list. If I wanted to change this to an unnumbered list, left click and drag, highlight everything, unnumbered list. You also have lots of options on these on what things you want to put in front of them. But the defaults are usually best. Uh, overly complex documents can confuse people, so it's good to keep it simple. All right, last but not least, uh, you can use the tell me box like y'all saw me use it when I was looking for format printer. Uh, or showing you where format printer was. You can click up here, search for things if you know what you're looking for. Another way is you can hit the F1 key, which is up by escape. That's going to give you help over here on the side. What do you want to do? Uh, text colors. All right. Color text. And it's going to give you some options. Change the font color. That's the one that we've been doing in here. Tells you how to do it. Where to start. Text you want to change. Home. Font group. Font color. Pick the color. And it tells you all the other options as well. All right. Uh, that will get you through both of the projects that you have inside of MindTap for this week. Give me just a second. When you're looking at our modules, remember in Course Organizer, we're doing our real first mind tap exercise. And let me just show you this real quick, and then I will get out of your way and not take any more of your day. You've got two projects. You've got the Word Module 1, creating and editing a document. You can read that if you'd like. Textbook Project 1 is going to take you through a good part of that. Uh, let's look at the end of Module Project 2. Loads in a new window. Number 1, this should work. That means that you have pop-ups enabled. We actually get to our learning module. And it's going to pop up a window like this. I would check right here to make sure that you have the right version of Windows installed. I'm going to assume that you do. When you click Start, here's your instructions. Notice it's a document that you download. Here's the document that they want you to edit. This is the page you're going to come back to after you've followed all of these instructions, changed this document, and saved it again. Then you'll come back here and drag that here, or you can you know, click the Browse Files and go find it. But the first thing you do is download the instructions. I'm going to put them on my desktop. Download the document. I'm going to put that on my desktop. Once I've done that, I can go to my desktop. Here's my instructions. Here's the document I'm supposed to change already has some stuff in it. Yeah, where'd my guys go? <laughs> Lost my two documents. Uh, but 
follow the instructions, make the changes to the document it says, save it, and then upload it back. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please email me. We will be back in class on Tuesday. I would not wait until Tuesday to start on these because we're just going to add some more on top of it. But give it a try over today or tomorrow uh, and make sure that you are making some progress and ask me if you have any questions. Uh, the other part, if you did not receive the notice, hopefully all of you are signed up for MyTCC alerts and receive the notice that campus is closed through the weekend and we'll start back up on Monday. All right, y'all have a good day and enjoy the rock hard snow that's outside. <laughs> Thank you.